I am Burdish and this is Epic Tabletop when we strive to give you the best hobby experience. Now, so today yet another review of Kickstarter, uh, but I couldn't miss this one. I, I mean, you'll see. Um, anyway, I can promise you that uh, next time we'll see each other, there will be no reviews. We will see each other at the field of battle. Uh, I mean, there will be a battle report. Uh, okay, about this review, I'm giving it rather a broad context. Um, so, um, I mean, I hope that you do want to listen to it. But if you don't, there are timestamps, so you can go straight ahead to the, um, you know, review part um, of the review, uh, when I show some miniatures and compare them to uh, other uh, producers. Uh, please remember to subscribe if you like what you see and hear. Uh, you know, this helps greatly. Uh, also, commenting and liking. Uh, just do wonders for YouTube algorithm. Uh, so now, without further ado, I invite you to the world of exiles who strike back. This journey of mine started slightly different than usually. I was in the middle of creating review for the Kickstarter The Videt Impera when Harald from Stewart asked me if I wanted to do some more reviewing and mini printing. Naturally, I was interested, so he showed me what project was in question, and straight away I became even more interested. First of all, it was to be done for a company called Axia Tales of the Old World. A telling name. Straight away I have recognized it. I do follow them on MMF and I am a fan of their minis. Secondly, the name of the Kickstarter was, mm, is, The Exiles Strike Back. And it has a strong vibe of Mordhay. This is a name I haven't heard in a long time. Well, not true. I keep hearing it all the time and it seems to me that this old GW game is gaining popularity as of late. Furthermore, we have rumors that it might be actually resurrected. Mind you, as an Age of Sigmar setting. Well, if this proves to be truth, I will certainly try it, but... Age of Sigmar universe doesn't ignite my imagination even half as much as the old world does. Maybe it is just a nostalgia, but from my days with Warhammer fantasy battles, uh, before it got nuked that is, Mordheim is the game I played the most and Mordheim is the game I remember most fondly. Some people call it the best GW game and some the best game, period. <laughs> The warband was to be Bretonian-ish, in look and feel, and knowing Axia I was sure that minis will be superb. This was confirmed fast when I saw some pictures and then even more when I received 3D files from Giuseppe of Axia. So given the opportunity to print and review these minis I couldn't miss it. Of course I don't want to limit anybody, if you do not fancy Mordheim, these guys can be used in any number of games, including the bigger ventures by certain big company that refuse to produce new miniatures for its rather popular resurrected fantasy game. <laughs> okay, jokes aside, these miniatures will do great in games like One Page Rules, Age for Fantasy, uh, Frost Grey, or Kings of War, to name just a few I play. But like I said before, my imagination got ignited by me picturing these minis strolling the streets of Old Aim. So after getting the files, I proceeded in my normal fashion. Setting the minis, printing the minis, cleaning the minis, hardening the minis, and painting some of the minis. Hold on a sec, I hear you asking. If you are so fond of Mordheim, why we didn't see any material concerning this game so far? A fair question, so let me answer it by stating that I was fantasizing about returning to Mordheim for quite some time now, and few years back I was almost ready to take a dive. And then... Necromunda happened. Hold on, eh, hold on, I hear you asking again. What this has to do with anything? What indeed? Let me tell you. Few years ago, like I said, I was almost ready to go back. Bold hey. As a chance would have it, a close gaming colleague of mine asked me if maybe I wanted to play not Mold Hame, but Necromunda. 
he and a bunch of his friends, few of whom I knew, were playing and surely I could join in. Hmm, I thought. Necromundi, in a spirit, is a, it is a very similar game. I've never played it before and it seems like a good idea to do it just now, I mean then. I was sure that this experience will excite me and give me even more reasons to return to old hay. So I created a warband of foul mutants, a gene stealer cult. I printed and painted quite a few pieces of terrain because I didn't want to join the party with empty hands. I even started to build gaming tables and the day has finally come when I took a ride to a place when the games were to commence every two weeks or so. And the experience was horrible. It was like pulling teeth without anesthesia. Slow and painful. Truth be told, I had my ass whooped all the time. But this was never, for me, before a reason not to have fun or play. But the gaming sessions were long and boring beyond reason. There was no excitement or fun to have. Uh, okay, let me explain a little, because I still believe Necromunda can be a fun game. It's just, the way the organizer of the whole thing was insisting we play ruined the whole experience for me. First of all, we have always play multiplayer matches. You know, like five people, free for all. Which is nonsense. It takes tons of time. It is immensely boring because you wait for your turn for so long. Secondly, the table we played on was 2D, like a dungeon. Cool looking, but really not using all the 3D playability that Necromunda can offer. And furthermore, my scaffolding platforms and other bits of terrain were not really welcome. Huh, an insult. Well, after 5 or 6 game, I said, it has been fun. I lied, but I'm out. Since then, I haven't touched the Necromunda stuff. <laughs> What's even funnier, mentioned good colleague of mine got me into the game, quit as well, and even sold his Necromunda stuff not to be tempted again. Okay, okay, so what's with that Necromunda stuff, right? I mean, where is Moldheim in all of this? Well, after this experience, I got spooked. What if my Moldheim memories are just a lie? What if what I feel is just a nostalgia and the game itself is not even as half as good as I remember? What if I try to play Morphim and the magic will be completely gone? Do I really want to do that? This has stopped me in for good and Morphim didn't happen. Back then, I mean. It has been a few years ago already and I'm actually quite ready to play Morphim again. At least to give it a try. Will I? Well, that remains to be seen, but to even consider playing, I need to have a table and some wall bands. As a matter of fact, I actually have a table. Oh, it has been made, not by me, long time ago, but it still looks more than decent. I mean, the wallpaper used for cobblestone is uh, not great, but the rest looks quite good. With some restoration effort, it can look fantastic, actually. But that is just a table. More game without suitable terrains make no sense for me. All the terrain that I once had is gone. It was even older than this table, very amateurish in how it was made and I would not want to use it anyway. So I need heaps of 3D interesting terrain and a warband, one or two, and here finally we get to Bretonian-ish. Warband from Axia, of the exiles who strike back at Morhen, at least in my mind. Giuseppe from Axia, Tales of the Old World, granted me access to initial Kickstarter 12 miniatures. Here you can see some of them, printed on my Elegu Mars 2, using cheap anacubic standard grey resin. Uh, to be honest, this was my first time printing minis with this resin. I usually use it to print bases, uh, pieces of small terrain and such. I must say they turn quite good, details-wise, although they seem and feel more brittle than printed in my usual resin. Speaking of which, here you can see uh, some of the minis printed, uh, of course on my mask too again, but 
with Syria Tech Fast Resin. They turned out beautiful, as always. Word on the street is that Syria Tech is generally grossly overpriced, and you can find same qualities in much cheaper resins. I will try that, but still, Syria have never let me down, and I really like the color of navy grey. Minis look great straight from the beginning, almost encouraging you to paint them. Now, about the printing, I had some issues, uh, namely some support failures which caused Minis not to print properly. These were two and only those two bowmen. I told Giuseppe about it, so I'm sure it has been taken care of. On the other hand, it seems this problem was present only on my Mars 2 and possibly on even older printers as well. Newer machines didn't have many issues. Well, I will have to upgrade my Mars 2 one of these days, but uh, to be perfectly honest, I like this machine a lot. The only thing I would change about it is uh, build play size so I can uh, print some, you know, bigger terrain pieces. Anyway, I have painted few of Giuseppe Minis. I can match his painting level since he is an accomplished painter, as you can read in a Kickstarter. Still, I would say my humble efforts yielded rather nice results. This is also due to Minis being not over complicated yet rich in details. What I mean is that these are clearly fantasy Minis, yet they are not over designed like some. If we check the knight, he's got his rather impressive crest that is actually looking good. Something I can't say about some of the new GW foot knights. We also have some reliquary, a chalice, and my favorite broken sword piece on his back. Possibly some relic or very broken heirloom that reminds him of his quest. I like him a lot. Order two characters that I've painted are of simpler status. Here you can actually marvel at how wonderful these minis are. I mean, I love the fact that they are not overburdened with some fantasy shit hanging all over them. Um, I mean, it's not that I don't like such minis, but I greatly appreciate restraint in this matter and the ability to make such minis that they look like actual fighting men, yet still having a fantasy feel about them. This was totally accomplished with these minis. Miniatures are also graceful and uh, beautifully proportioned. I actually noticed that straight away, but Comparing them to other manufacturers highlighted this even more. And there are the dogs. These must be the best dogs on the market. I love how they look. This, uh, uh, this barding on them is, is a superb idea and it looks great. They would be wonderful companions in Frostgrave and Mordheim. Although in Mordheim they are actually heroes equipment as I recall. <laughs> well, eh, still. I did paint the handler just couldn't decide how to base the whole thing, so for now everything, well, is separate. But I do picture this guy with his dogs on a square base of suitable size as a unit filler for Old World or Kings of War. He would make such a brilliant add-on, adding additional character to a unit. Alright then, let us do some comparing with all the manufacturers. So, First we have Axia 3 Minis and two plastic original Mordheim human mercenaries from GW. As you can see Axia figures are taller and uh, more naturally proportioned. Heads and palms are smaller or, or slimmer if you will. It seems that still or historical Minis might be a good match for Axia. I mean either Giuseppe's Minis need to be scaled down or still war scaled up but style wise they may go together rather well I think. I mean, Steel War Surgeons and uh, Bowmen slash Crossbowmen, knights are too ascetic in the proper historical look to pass for Bretonians. I think I'll try that. Now actual Bretonians uh, on men at arms from GW. Well, uh, not a match. I mean, you can scale down Axiomenes, but again, proportions are different and doesn't seem to me that they will go together well. Now, from the left, uh, we have GW Middenheim Metal Captain for Mordheim, Axia Mini, the Pilgrim from GW Bretonians, uh, also a Metal Mini, then Axia Knight, of course, and Greatsword, Metal Captain from GW Empire range. Well, uh, Middenheimer is uh, too small. The Pilgrim, though, uh, doesn't look half bad among Axia Minis. 
great sword seem almost as tall as Axia Knight but so much slimmer. Next to this knight he actually looks unnaturally slim. Like I said, Tales of the Old World Mies are really good looking. Now two metal Mies from GW Mordheim range. Johan the Knight, a special character and the Witch Hunter Captain. Again, proportions are different, but, but uh, uh, Witch Hunter Captain is huge. I mean, this is the first miniature that is of equal size with the Knight. <laughs> By the way, I keep mentioning on uh, different occasions problem that uh, Gevu had with their scale. <laughs> Check out the Bretonian dude against the Witch Hunter, <laughs> right? Now some printed minis from Highland, miniatures extensive range of Bretonian-ish like minis. <laughs> so um, size wise they are as tall as Axia minis, proportions on the other hand are more GW like, I mean they are bigger than GW but if you scale them down they will look good together I think. Will they go well with Axia? Well it seems that depends, Highland Knight on the right seemed like a very good match with Axia brethren. And uh, but listen, in the end it is a matter of opinion. I actually think that scale matters more when you have minis in units, but uh, in a game like Mordheim, this is much more forgiving. Uh, that's what I think anyway. Here we have some Ezepian miniatures. Uh, uh, the guy in the middle is uh, <laughs> big, it seems like there is some scale problem with these minis, or rather with him. Uh, the guy in the crested helmet on the other hand looks very well next to Axia miniatures. He seemed slightly slimmer, but I think he would fit with Axia Minis in the same unit with no adjustment. Furthermore, it in terms of style they seem to match rather well also. Uh, the third guy is from Reinhardt, a Zipion range as well. Uh, you could see those guys in my Shadow of the Horned Rat battle report. Uh, this range is a Warhammer baseline for me. If I want to have something printed to uh, fit with my GW minis, I'm using these Ezepion minis as a template of sorts, scaling down or up on the minis to match the size with them. All in all, I think Ezepion minis can complement Axia range rather well. To sum up, these are beautiful miniatures, skillfully designed with beautiful proportions and cool details. Have a look at the Kickstarter, which is still going at the time of publishing this material. Uh, several additional miniatures have been unlocked, which makes the whole Kickstarter even more attractive. There is a great sorceress with a bit of a wild look, which suits me just fine. An awesome guy with a pig. As an extra, you can order this gentleman for a few euros as super miniature for a leader of a whole gang. At the bottom in the description of this material you will find a link to the mentioned Kickstarter. And with this optimistic note I say goodbye to you. Cheers, until next time.